Okay, here's a new one out by Wall Street Journal, and uh, it's pretty interesting. It, uh, it's kind of a verifier for me here a little bit. Uh, I talked about this site a while back, made a slight mention of it too, of like when is that site going to come out. But uh, I've made a few other videos too about the Americas and uh, fishy things of about it and stuff like that. But let's just go ahead and get into this, and I'll delve into it more um, it tells you Mexican cave find hints that people lived in North America 30,000 years ago and that in a lofty cavern archaeologists discovered spear points and other implements that indicate people were in living in North America earlier than previously believed and so we're gonna look at this here just a little bit Let's see if I can get this in there right quite a good picture of it and you can see it's a flaked off point and one would think well that's that's real important I guess but it man that it may be not even I may be natural or something right well they from what I hear the way this went down when they first found these things they were like well um we found a whole bunch of them like a, a work a work area where they were making these things and that's strange so they got into it a little more and from what I hear I'll have to look at the real paper and see if they even go into any of this stuff from what I hear though there was a hell of a lot more by the time the guy got back from his meeting and da 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 or some kind of crap and they were da da he contacted him back and he goes well hell I got that many more again and it kept going and then they decided to go ahead and do not just these two little puddle areas but the area and I'll show you that in the cave and in doing so wham and they've really gotten close to 2,000 of these artifacts out of here and it's way beyond question it still looks somewhat rough, but some of these people say it has a lot to do with these Mustarian and Iterian point that we see over in the Old World, too. And there might be connections, and I'll go into a few of those a little bit later. So they described this. Scientists said they unearthed hundreds of unusual green limestone, spear point blades, and other implements from the Chequahit cave I believe that's how you pronounce it don't know and what's special about this and why another reason that they were like uh huh we know something's up is that that's not what the cave is made out of and there's no other rocks that are there that are like that but there's some that are way out there and there and it appears that they were taking and working and utilizing those rocks so as we get into this, we're not even going to talk about just this subject. We're going to go off into the peopling of the old world and new world and humanity a little bit and come at it from the other end. For quite often, I go up into the 10,000 years, and Gobekli Tepe has been very gracious at giving us that step into this lost civilization that used to be there. But there was one before that that we didn't know of. And that was the people of Catalhoyuk. Now we know about the Natufians and their expanse. And it seems like circles in South Africa are the same as the ones up here in Libya, dating about the same time. And wow, they were all over this place. But then there's a Hofmeyer site that says it goes back to 40,000 BC. So <clears throat> let's just get into this. Archaeologists in Mexico found stone tools and other signs that people were living in North America 30,000 years ago, which is much earlier than widely believed, according to new research reshaping the debate over the origins of people in the Americas. In a study reported Wednesday, scientists led by archaeologist Cyprian Ardelin at Mexico's University of Zacatecas said that they had unearthed hundreds of unusual green limestone spear points, blades, and other implements from a lofty cavern in the central Mexican highlands for wandering hunter-gatherers. 
The cave served as a makeshift tool shed, possibly beginning as early as about 33,000 years ago, the scientists said. But that's what they've found so far, and it seems like that's the good dating. But they're about to do another site, which they think might be rich with things too, and who knows what will come out of that. It might lead older or younger they want to see the extent of the cave's use and it seems to have been used for quite some time. Uh, these new finds at Chacahuit Cave located almost 9,000 feet above sea level and about 400 miles northwest of Mexico City are the latest in a series of discoveries across North and South America that have archaeologists pushing humankind's entrance into the Americas deeper into antiquity. The discoveries in Mexico were published in the Journal of Nature, and I almost pulled up their article, but this one had three good pictures, and theirs had two, and this other one that I didn't like is good, but it had a great opening picture. It's a fundamental change in our way of thinking, said anthropologist Ruth Goon, an emeritus professor at the University of Alberta who helped pioneer studies of early migrations into North and South America. She wasn't involved in the find, Dates around 30,000 years ago indicate that people have been on both continents twice as long as generally believed. And so we're, we're getting a lot of stuff lately from the old world, as we would say now. But we're getting a lot of stuff from the new world. And if you'll stick with me, I'll show you how it might have even once been the old world. What? Stick with me. Grab a coffee. Pause it if you have to. Migrations into the Americas. Recent excavations at a cave in Mexico add to the evidence that settlements in the American continent began some 10,000 years earlier than previously thought. No, it's well more than 15. So I don't know how old you are and how much you've been into this, but you probably remember in school, they used to say 10,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, people came across, and then we found some stuff that was earlier than that. And so all of a sudden they started saying, well, there was this ice-free corridor at one certain time, and people had come across that. Well, okay, that's great, but that timeline then, I believe, was 12,800 to 13,6 or some crap. But then they find these sites that are, oh, well, it's leading right into Cooper's Ferry, which I did a video about, oh, back before Christmas, 16,000, 15,000. So now they have to, like, well, uh, how'd they get there? So there's this idea they came across and went this way. And see, there's the Paisley Cave and everything else, so maybe it's that age that they came across. So then you should see younger and younger dates farther away from that point. But what we find is 1514, but oh my God, Cactus Hill, 19 to 20,000 BC. Page Ladston, 14,000. But Galt site here in Texas is dated perfectly at 18,000 now. This says 17,000. But there are, pl there are stuff that's showing habitation and stuff going back to 26,000. And so that's well over 10,000, which is well over 4,000 from what you said. And it doesn't make sense. And they can't go off this ice corridor sheet anymore at all, can they? Right? So how does that happen? Well, if you'll look up here... The late Pleistocene coastline it shows in the green dots and green land that was there during that time. So it wouldn't be too hard if you could just pick and poke at it. You might be able to come around here and not be able to make it and make it through that thing eventually. But that seems like that happened a long time before. But during the last ice age when all the water was sucked down, Oh, this is green right here, and I'll be damned, they're going to tell you in a minute, these people had boats. Yep, 
but it's dating to 30,000 and it's way down in Mexico and what the hell and yeah so they're gonna tell you it could easily go back to 50,000 but I can take it back farther than that perhaps and show you some blends here before I got a chance to put this out after seeing this CFAPS put out one and I'm like wow so I didn't use that other article because sometimes I do use his articles. But Robert Sepper, as I was putting these two together and trying to grab a YouTube channel in one place of that I had, which I'll bring up called Calico Dig Site. It's like in San Bernardino, California and out in the desert. That shows something else and we'll look at that coming up. But this site so you would think that there, if this is 16, then you'd find something at 14. Well, they do here, but how come 26,000, and how did that happen? And then this place is at 33,000. And so it's the earliest site found in North America at this point. But it also takes it to another level, because these people have a burgeoning type of point system that looks a little Mousterian type stuff, but then there might be a reason for that. I'll get into that here shortly. But deeper in even Brazil, they have 18 at Monte Verde. And uh, I think they say that there are habitation ish stuff that goes back close to 25, 30,000 years ago when they've set on that. But then there's Paui, which is 20 to 30,000, and Santa Helena is 23. So, how do you get here before you get there? Right? And so this cave that comes in from an entrance that's kind of catfish mouth and it opens up into a decent cave where people probably would have occupied here quite a bit, but then late in the cave and there's this chimney cut up here thing, but it doesn't go to the surface, I don't think. No, 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 no. But they're going to future excavate here where they found the stuff is here in the excavation and they're digging this all out here so who knows they might do it in between here once but they're thinking before this ledging that's right here that'll be a good place to check now this he says the state of Pui indicates five sites Tok I'm not gonna try it or mention it <laughs> no not even gonna do it Toka 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 Antonio North the sources the Chahidi cave early human settlements Geological Survey of Canada, Ice Sheets, Paleo-Indian Paleo Database of the Americas, Late Pleistocene Coastline. And so that's the other dotted formed line that's here, and then overlaying that green that's on there, right? So people talked about this thing, but this bearing land bridge and stuff in here, and, and if you look, there's no glaciation going on there. Right, there might have been ice packed out into here. In fact, they believe well that the ice would have sealed in this area, and they might have people might have been just walking across this thing where there isn't land and land. But like in Siberia, it might have had a fully open spot, and they found some mammoth stuff that says, like, well, you know, there probably had quite a bit of open area, so they show it like this. Yeah, Cooper's Ferry. I don't know if y'all seen the one that I've been there, but so they've got Paisley Cave, but I'm going to talk about a place not even mentioned here in a minute. Right about here or where, well, it's going to be in the, right there. For most of the 20th century, archaeologists were convinced that big game hunters known as the Clovis people, identified by the fluted flint spear points they made, were the first Americans arriving about 12 to 13,000 years ago. And everybody said, oh, they showed up and they were just so incredible. They killed off all the mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and everything. And it's like, no, nah, it couldn't have happened like that. And uh, it just couldn't happen like that. And the evidence doesn't show that every carcass they find has been done. And if they found one, they go, well, see? And it's like, man, that's like one of 63 here. But you found one. So they killed one out of these. Well, I can find that all over the place, and there's still lots of elephants. So why'd they all go away? And, it, well, it, um, climate change, and that, of course, became a big thing. And it still rapidly is. But 
No, it seems like something dramatic happened at the Younger Dryas event leading into this time that was right through here. It screwed everything up. People started running around like chickens with their head cut off. And if anybody was here at that time, which every one of those dates is, would have screwed it up badly. In the Younger Dryas event videos I did recently, it talks about how they've got evidence of it all the way down into Chile and all the way into Europe all the way to uh, Abu Huera and that's over by Catalhoyuk and Gobekli Tepe and then swamped all the way across it in Iceland and everywhere else and of course we've got the crater that's there Hiawatha but recently uh, one of the guys who's all about this and a bag of chips but also a skeptic of course and rightly so to be but he actually did it he and I did a video about this he went through the information and he recants and he goes, I don't even care if Hiawatha Crater dates there or not. This is proof that it happened. And airburst is fine with me. That's what it shows. Which is amazing to see somebody flip-flop like that. But, uh, no it's not. As long as you're a real scientist, hey, boom, you know. Jesus comes pulling down in a spaceship with sunglasses on and stuff and disco balls and everything. Where yeah, I'll be like, wow, that was different. Peace. Hmm. Let's go with this. It would take about that long. Well, no, I would geek and throw up in my mouth real quick. I, I don't know. But anyhow. In fact, New Isle analysis of 42 archaeological sites, early archaeological sites, by radiocarbon dating expert Lorena Bacara Valida at the University of New South Wales in Australia also published Wednesday in Nature, along with it, established that North America was widely settled by 15,000 years ago. And so that ruins the whole Clovis first idea, of course. And we find things like Salutrians, and we'll get into that here at the end of this. Where am I at? 17 minutes? I should be able to do this all in one. If it goes to two, it'll be in your top left-hand corner, but this gets interesting. Humans were present in North America a lot earlier than we thought. It points to a complex and really interesting peopling process. Well, here's a theory I'm going to hit you with where it might make it more than just interesting. But, gah. And I've been trying to lead to this, but it's also one of those elf on the shelf things that I say I don't have enough verification for it. But a few more things, and I'll be all about it. And I'm willing to even put the theory out there first and try to make it a hypothesis and work it through. But to have reached Mexico by around 30,000 years ago, however, the first, the first loose, first Americans must have traveled from Asia into North America thousands of years earlier. Well, hell, twice as long. Think about that. Either across a land bridge or by sea along the coast, several scientists said it is considered unlikely that they came directly across open ocean, but actually a possibility. But it's more likely that I think we're looking at the first people in coming about far, by 40,000 years ago or so, Dr. Grun said. And I could say, yeah, that works out pretty well with timing of Cro-Magnon man. Doesn't it? And shortly after in England and areas on that side of the Atlantic. Well, and that puts it all like Atlanteans and some kind of BS too. I'll get into that hopefully, but the other three points I want to make first. For a decade, Dr. Arndlian searched the state of Zacatas for evidence of such early human settlements. He explored 35 sites with no luck. In 2010, local villagers told him of the remote Chiquita Cave, where Dr. Uh, Dr. Arndlian and his colleagues first ventured into its inky interior. He expected a little more than a coyote den. 
he was surprised to discover two vast vaulted interconnected chambers steeply sloping down like I showed you in the heart of the mountain. We were shocked by the size of everything, he says. Well, everything's bigger in Texas, and that's just right there's Mexico, so uh, surprisingly, it wasn't just full of bats, though. What do you think? If there was more insect population, I bet it would have been. In 2012, they dug a test pit in the loosely compacted gravel, sand, and fragmented rock about 150 foot from the cave entrance, that backer place where they go, hey, check it out, we'll dig here. The deeper they dug, the harder it was to keep the walls of the pit from collapsing in. So it was very sandish type and loamy and it'd fall back in. When I left the cave, he said, I was convinced I had nothing. I had several bags of rocks with me that somehow looked suspicious. And so here we look at the dig currently, and I'd like to make a note that every one of these stick it posty notes that they've got up here are all marking where they took a and they brushed down slowly slowly and found something and then they take pictures of it they want to know where it is 3d in the matrix like boom and they mark it out and then take it out he's there waiting to take ones out that are certain ones that have been marked and they'll know every little layer and if they find some piece of uh, organic matter and stuff associated with it and they go okay and this goes with it and they keep them together and everything and try to watch the hell what they're doing they're not just taking a shovel in there digging and flipping it out and go that looks like a arrowhead no that's not what's going on here that's what went at the galt site and they went far too deep and then found something makes you wonder in key places and epsilon sites if you were to do that what else you might find for all it took is somebody trying to look and I'm sure up until his find here, everybody thought that he was gone stupid and gone mad and wasting his career away trying to find some fairy type of thing, right? Think about it. But all these little rocks and special things, and not every one of these rocks, all you know, there's rocks and this, that, and the other, and then what the hell? Look at this. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's 34 of them over here. The Chiquita Cave served as makeshift tool shed, possibly beginning as early as 30,000 years ago, scientists said. In the laboratory, they identified three hand flake stone chips creating during troll making, the charred remains of palm plants and the bone from a bear's penis. Yep, and I could go into this thing and Clan of the Cave Bear and stuff that I've re recently done a video about. See if you don't just plug that in and let's go. Radiocarbon dating of the bone and charcoal suggested they might be around 27,000 years old, he said. Well, that rang the alarm, he said, and it rang my Cro-Magnon alarm. In three years of field work, they recovered more than 1,900 tools made from small distinctive chunks of greenish limestone not normally found around inside the cave. They sharpened points, blades, and scrapers had been crafted with soft hammer blows, likely from a wooden or bone striker. Dr. Adrian said they looked like nothing else he had seen in the Americas. And so they were somewhat of a unique thing, but he said like nothing they'd seen in the Americas. Wait till they come out and tell you the style and what it shows to be a pre-proto form of, and it starts to make sense with these Atlanteans that came in from out of the deal and everything, and how that might have all worked out for the doubling. For we talk about Proto-Indo-Europeans and how they fool but the snake grew up and went around and bit itself. But where the hell did this guy come from? Well, there's this snake, and he came out of the ocean, and yam, the sea, and they killed him, and da-da-da. And you're listening to those stories, and Leviathan, and all these things, and where mythology connects with actually things that happened. But somebody said something about Atlantis, and they think, oh, the date's off, and this, that, and the other's off. Yeah, well, something happened then around that time. Isn't that amazing? And then you start finding all these things to connect to it. And you're like, well, isn't that amazing? And then, and then you get to the point where you go, well, there are people over here during then. And isn't that amazing? And they're all gone in this Clovis thing. And then the Salutrians were already here before that. And what? Why are you shushing me up? What? Well, this just steps over that and says, well, that wasn't 22 to 28. Here we got 33. 
And you're just stepping back in time, all of a sudden it gets to the point where, boom, because check it out. Now we're stepping into the starting of the last ice age. And let me see. Let me see if I can get this one out real easy. If there's a corridor that forms coming into it, there might be a corridor coming out of it. Or, i.e., we know there was a corridor formed right here coming out of it. Bet there's something before that. No, there's there's not one. Like the corridor now is not. Yeah, and everybody's worried about it. Oh, it went through that before. Yeah, we've been here a long time. We start looking at 315,000 Homo sapiens. Where's it all come from? And, and you know, I'm, I'm not discounting other people too that people don't even think about or talk about, like Denisovans. And what they've done for they had incredible architecture for their time the bracelet and there's only a few things that show it but it's like what the hell is this I mean it looks like something from just a few thousand BC at the most and yet it dates way back in a time like this and these people that were running around at this timeline Researchers found ample genetic evidence of plants and animals in the mix of sediments, but no human DNA. Without DNA, I cannot say who they were or are or who they were related to. Whether they are from the north or the south or, you know, whether if they're like, well, that's Cro-Magnon man. Or if that's this or that looks like more like, you know, homo, you know, whatever. What is this? And they can't verify it from that. But when you look at tools, pottery, and things, and like I said, before genetics came out, people were able to do this clearly by looking at types. But whenever you take it and you say, well, here's some stuff that looks like that in America. And they're like, nah, nah, nah. And, and there's an extreme force against that point. Because that ruins the whole thing. Political, racial, The whole thing. To estimate the age of the cave finds, the scientists conducted 46 radiocarbon tests using samples of bone, charcoal, and plant matter in six tests with a technique called optical stimulated luminescence that can date minerals. Yep, the most recent tool bearing level was about 13,000 years ago. The oldest layer was between 33,150 and 31,405 years old, the scientists said. And this is down in the middle of Mexico, people, so how'd they get here? We don't have teleporters. If you're going to give the people a teleporter, then we need to have a totally different conversation anyhow. At least three different groups migrated. Let me start over. At least three different groups migrated into the Americas in the first waves of settlement, scientists said, but these earliest inhabitants of central Mexico seem to have little in common with them. That would be four, at least, and that would say the Salutrian, Clovis, and then the one that we know about that turned into the, most of the Amerindians that were here. But what remnants was left of here? Well. X haplo group shows you that there's remnants and I've showed you videos about that and here we go with those pieces of the puzzle that start clicking in and we'll brush on that in just a moment so but these earliest inhabitants of Mexico seem to have little in common with them because they also lived at such a high altitude and that's what made me think of Denisovans whenever I did that because they know that it's that genome of people that turned into the Himalaya peoples. Well, this isn't the Himalayas in any way. No, it's not. And we're all known to be mountain people and cro and all that stuff, too, so that's not really helping their case at all for that, but it brought it to mind, and i got to throw it out there. Oh, there's, by the way, there's this card still left on the deck, if anybody's seen it. But the other three didn't and because their tools were so different, indeed, there may have been many other as yet undiscovered groups among these earliest Americans who don't fit academic preconceptions about our past. 
like why there's Indians in South America that built all these things in North America they didn't do it, but there's these mound cultures, but by the time we got here, that wasn't really going on either. What was going on? Hmm. They were much more diverse culturally and probably genetically than we were eager to accept today. Want to throw that out there or something? <laughs> Got to be PC. There may be great diversity of people hiding under our misconceptions. Oh, sure. It could be just about anybody. Hell, it could have been a lone Homo erectus way back when that got over here and, like, doubtful, though. Maybe we're looking at another form, if we could ever get genetics or something out of them, where it would be somebody like the Denisovans or the Cro-Magnons, or maybe it's where they came from. Where Cro-Magnon popped up out of nowhere entirely possible so that's by Robert Lee Holtz at Science Journal and uh, now we want to look at something how much time I got a good 15 minutes so I've got so much stuff pulled up here but let's see if I can get to this I hope the sounds coming through better this time I'm trying to stay a little more directed at the mic but I know I turned my head away a few times while I'm talking oh oh but Kamyana Mohila, dating it 22,000 B.C., but I'll do another one on that here soon. I had planned on it. Whoa, I'm missing one of the ones here, or I've gone past it. There's Monte Verde, but I don't want to talk about it. Um, da -da. So here's X haplogroup. And if we simply look at the picture here, and uh, we'll look at two. So if we look at the picture here, what they always do is they show you the Earth like this instead of showing the Atlantic Ocean being in the middle. The Atlantic Ocean being in the middle. Wouldn't it make sense maybe if you put the Atlantic Ocean in the middle? Well, what they've done here is they've shown that, well, there's a little bit here, there's a little bit out here, and there's a little bit out here. Well, okay, so is this like the haplogroup? Because this, these are the Ainu, those Caucasian types that live in. So, oh, well, no, 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 no. Okay, well, then what is it? Well, if we put it the other way, you can kind of see there's this bay here that they talked about, Atlantis, going out the Pillars of Hercules, and a couple of islands here that are attached. And maybe those islands that aren't even showing that should look like Hawaii or whatever, but out over here in the middle of the ocean... Well, really, it'd be about here. Lead you across to here, and, well, there it is. More concentrated in the northeast, and nothing very much here, and just seems to make more sense. When we look at genetic patterns and the way that we're all worked out, you're seeing an ancient people here that break up and in the Middle East, and they don't want to necessarily say, oh, in Egypt, well, we've talked about that. R and N, and now N breaks into different haplogroups. M, N, and R is still over in here. Oh, whoops, can't say that. And, oh, it made it all the way over here. Whoops. And they don't even want to talk about how it is here, but they just go, oh, that's all. See all these people that were here? They're all up in Europe now. See? But out of this came this one apparently but then suddenly the Indians have it and what's amazing about that let's see if I can show it to you is they tell you that it happened at least 20,000 to 45,000 years ago yeah geneticists have figured okay well that happened then well whoopsie because now we have 20,000 years as your earliest date and they go um, uh, and go go to 45 45 to 20 now we're hitting that same time aren't we that's strange so let's uh how much got mm. nine or ten minutes so i i welcome you to look at this information too for this is the calico dig site and they call it the calico early man site in here but where it is is it's near uh an ancient Pleistocene lake near Barstow in San Bernardino, California, out in the Mojave Desert of Southern California, which didn't used to be a desert, by the way, just like the Sahara was green. This site is on the middle Pleistocene conglomerates, 
and now cemented alluvial debris flow deposits known uh, variously as the Calico Hills or the Yermo Hills or the Yermo Formation. Holocene evidence includes petroglyphs and trail segments that are probably related to outcrops of locally high quality siliceous rock, primarily chalcedony and freshwater limestone. And so crystals and things like that, right? Well, they tell you that um, they've got a Pleistocene lake that people are around at 18,000 years ago. That's not, no, that's not it. So what they did was they started digging there and getting that date, and then people called bullshit on them. And, of course, what you've got to dig, people, whenever you do these archaeological sites is a test site. When you find something like this, you've got to go over here, and they usually take you sometimes far away and say, dig a test pit here, but at least as deep, if it's not deeper than what you've got right there, and show me that this is not just something that just shows up. And whenever they dug the text dig site, which I've got in my video, I will try to grab it and link it, but look up in my site, Calico Dig Site, you'll see it. And it's a place where they filmed part of Star Wars, not too far from, where all the Jawas and things were at, in a few movies. But... They dug this test pit down, and they kept finding stuff and finding stuff and finding stuff and went way deeper than the other one because they kept finding stuff. And like, you're supposed to stop, but no, they kept finding stuff. And they got down to 70 feet, and so this guy had come there for the interview that's in my thing, in my video, and in it, he tells you they're at 200,000 B.C., for all intents and purposes, finding pieces of wood associated with it, and then right there in the, embedded in the wall is this flaked looking, more primitive than this, big old stuff at 200,000 BC. But they find those alluvial deposits, stratigraphy, that go 100,000 in a soil profile, and in that soil profile there was a rock ring. Not a fire hearth, as people try to say, because there's some charcoal next to it that they were able to do it. But it wasn't really a hearth. It was dated to 135,000 years ago by thermoluminescence, we talked about a second ago, and about 200,000 years by uranium series analysis, and about 197,000, give or take, by surface beryllium dating. Now, thermoluminescence has to do, I believe, the way they do this one has to do with the last time it saw light. So that actually could make a difference on the dating of this. But the other two, and I'm not going to say, well, two out of three, but let's just say 135 to 200,000 years old, right? Now, the rock Wren biface, gradual form biface tool, covered from young nested inset alluvial deposits, dated to sediment thermoluminescence at 14,000 years. But the test pit located dis discovery is currently still being excavated and yielding actual artifactual material. And I'm telling you, I did the video on this about two and a half years ago, but that video was about a year and a half old, and I'm sure they've gotten more than 70 feet down now, say 80, 90. Well, then they would be breaking that 200 barrier, and if they're still finding stuff, well, hold on. There's a whole lot of stuff in here, and I could tell you about little bitty things and stuff that they talk about, but Freshwater Lake De Basin developed about 400 to 500,000 years ago, and they're dating it around that. We'll, we'll show you also. Sites in excess of 350,000 years before of fossils showing up from the area from ancient Camel, horse, mammoth, saber-toothed cat, dire wolf, short-faced beer, coyote, flamingo, pelican, eagle, swan, geese, mallard duck, ruddy duck, canvasback duck, double-crested cormorant, grebe, crane, seagull, and stork. It's like a bunch of crap there, but they're finding there are people here utilizing this. And uh, the styles they're talking about of the tools are suggesting somewhere between 20 to 30,000 before present, but that's related to other artifacts, other places. So here we have that same type of thing, right? But it's dating it 200,000 years before present. A stone from the master pit has been dated at over 200,000 years before present.
Um, well, the regular tools are finding up to 26 feet below the surface, but in the pit they found 200,000 because they go to 70 feet, apparently. I think that's what it says in the video. So, how much time I got? Hmm, five minutes at the most. Okay, so they start talking about angles and stuff and the, how they fracture stuff. And the current consensus is that uh, the lack of other evidence of human activity is kind of bad and not in their favor, things that are not in their favor. The deep antiquity of the site uh, is 30,000 BC, and that date itself is controversial, but then we just talked about how that is no longer controversial. So, okay, so then that dates that one correctly in this, but then what about the 70 foot deep? Well, the sheer number of possible, possible tools they have, up to 60,000 tools that they found. Yeah, so over here they had a tool shed. Well, over here they got uh, the warehouse and the foundry, foundry making it. Uh, what the hell? Going on for some time there. Um, let's just go on here and say the archaeologist Jeffrey Goodman, who worked at the site with Leakey, who's extremely famous, has claimed the stone artifacts to be human-made. Goodman has also made the controversial statements that the artifacts count at Calico Hills may be as old as five hundred thousand years old and if proven would be the oldest human artifacts in the world which would place human origins in the Americas however the majority of scientists have rejected these claims according to Kitta Feather Goldman's claims were not backed up with even a shred of evidence well we're starting to get a few more pieces to the puzzle here and it's entirely possible and when you get to a certain point and you go well there's stuff still here that's older than that well then what would that say and so which way did this thing go that no one's even ever looked for in the Americas and it looks like it might have went the other way just like the out of Africa theory is supposed to go this with all these ancient hominids and it looks like they're a modern human what we used to call Cro-Magnon man came blended through and it went the other way but that's for another video Robert in his video does go there though. so 500,000 BC in the Americas here at a calico right dig site so that's beating the hell out of the 33,000 that we were just looking at and it's still showing these pay, these sites and in fact the tools are quite similar leading back and they even say well the tools about 30,000 BC and they found over 60,000 of them but they found that at 28 foot depth but they dug their test pit and at 30 foot they found stuff in 35 40 45 50 and they in that last video I made they were at 70 foot and they weren't through and they tell you right here that they weren't through and then this other guy mouthed off and says it is over 500,000 years and they even tell you straight out that that might mean that mankind even started totally different place than people once went with and you talk about lost civilizations, and I go, whoa, that's way more than that. For there's a few lost civilizations going on in this. Hmm. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments. And uh, like, share, and subscribe, of course. If you haven't already, make sure your bell's rung. And we'll get on to this, and we're going to hit that... Um, out of Africa theory that's already been beat to death and no longer valid. Well, one more time, I'm going to try to do a little compilation like this.